so you can read them on it. Hey everybody, welcome to our live this evening. So I am here with the creators of the Eagle Pro 6 and we're going to kind of do our introductions and then we're going to let everybody kind of have a few minutes to jump on and I'm going to grab a seat over here to the side and read them some of the questions that we have going on. So I'm going to have y'all, we've got some people starting to log on. So I'm going to let y'all introduce yourself. And for those that don't know me, I am Summer Terry, the owner of Superior Therapy LLC here in Guthrie, Oklahoma. And so we are going to start this live off. I'm going to kind of turn it over to them and we're going to get the backstory. And then we're going to take a trip out to the barn and we're going to have them demonstrate how to put the Pro 6 on and talk a little bit more about the conditions and the things that we will treat with it. So I'm going to turn it over to y'all. Thank you. Um, my name is Jill McDermott, and uh, this is my business partner, Linda, uh, Linda Reese, and we're from Upper Michigan, and we created the Pro 6. Yeah, and so tell us a little bit about what the Pro 6 is. I posted a few videos on um, our Facebook, that way people could kind of see it in action, so I posted one of the collages of a horse working over the Cavalettis without it, and then a horse working over the Cavalettis with it, a little more collected and a little more in control. Um, but kind of tell us the background of it. Well, um, what we were was horse owners that had a variety of horses with a variety of issues. And um, we tried, to, Linda is a registered nurse and I'm a certified massage therapist. And we wanted to start problem solving with the uh, problems we were presented by our horses and rescue horses we were dealing with. So um, the the Pro Six is what morphed from our collaboration <laughs> and problem solving. With numerous prototypes, very very rudimentary, but we've progressed and we have a wonderful product now, very effective for we, all kinds of things. Yeah, and we developed the product for the horse. Uh, where it would almost work with the horse with, without uh, too much human intervention. And so tell us how it's different than other balance trainers because there's a lot on the market and, and I know that's going to be one of the questions that comes up. So let, we're just going to start with that one. How, how is it different? I would say the biggest difference is that we recognize that we didn't want to be um, focused on certain areas of the horse that the best correction comes from addressing the whole animal and so we found that it was most effective uh, when you wrap the entire horse and so it's comprised of a couple of two principal bands one that goes horizontally all around the chest and the tail and then the second band would be the abdominal band a band that goes over the back and comes up under the the abdomen to engage the core to help support the back and strengthen the back. Some of the things that have come up since we developed this are the profound effects it has on the horses and what the horses tell us, um, tell us by how they move, how they react. Um, we found that when you address the whole animal um, that you are engaging in swaddling with the elastic so you get calming, you get focus, you have concentration. <laughs> Did you want to add? Okay. Well, and a couple other things um, about the physical look of the wrap is we purposely stayed away from the uh, girth area because that's often a problem area with horses. So it was the design was purposely not to go anywhere near the girth area. And also we designed it with the thought that we were not going to attach this to any kind of tack on your horse. We wanted the horse to be able to um, benefit from the product without any uh, human tack added. Well, and I think that, that that's helpful too for horses that aren't being able to be ridden. You know, like especially like say a horse that's had kissing spine that is not released to ride yet or... A horse that um, you know the EPM horses where we start retraining them from the ground before we ever saddle them up that was one thing that I know drew me to using it was the fact that um, the other thing that I like is the fact that it doesn't pull on the horse's mouth um, 
because I mean, one thing when we have horses here in treatment, um, I, I feel like it's not my responsibility to be bidding somebody's horse up, if you will. And I see a lot of the training aids and balance aids out there that people are not using correctly, that those horses are back behind the bridle, and that puts, um, you know, impingement on the neck. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. And another thing it does is by forcing the horse to hold its head in that position, they're building muscle that in the end um, they don't want to build. You're talking about when their head is, is yeah, tied down. And, and their neck is curved do and they're building the top of that pole up and uh, rigid muscle and they're going to build muscle up you don't want to. Absolutely. And and that's what a lot of what we deal with is, is overbuilding. Right. Um, you know, get you get the horses that are weak in the hind end that are super hollow back behind the shoulder blades or mm-hmm. you get the horse that um, is so overbuilt in front of the scapula And then you have all of that impingement and, you know, you get that crest starting on the neck. Like, you just get a lot of things that could be, um, you know, it takes a long time to be corrected and maybe they could have been prevented in the first place. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we find that we we get all those results. We get the balancing. We get the head lowered. We get the beautiful stretches. So it's wonderful the way it is. We didn't need to force frames and we didn't need to force positions. Yes, and the fact that it is made out of elastic has is is a benefit to conditioning these horses. People think that maybe the horse will not move in it, that um, they're not going to want to push against that elastic resistance, but the opposite is true. It, especially in the front, yes. we found. People yep. were concerned when we put a band across the chest, but the horses willingly move into it, and if you want to build a better stride and a stronger stride, this will do it for you. It's not restrictive in any way. Well, and, and that was one of the questions. Sorry, guys. Um, had a little bit of a interruption there. <laughs> and be sure, whatever questions y'all have, um, be sure to post the questions. And I'm going to just go down through there and, and read the questions. Um, also, if you're already a Pro 6 owner and you want to share something of your story, um, we would definitely like to have those read as well. Um, so we have one that's this just ordered and and can't wait to get it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the sizing and and how to order. Right now we're offering three different sizes. We have a small size for larger ponies uh, from 11.2 to about 14 hands. Our standard size that's most riding horses. So I think 14.2 to 17.1 or so. On that higher end, you're we have to consider the build too. So if you have a horse over, say, 16.3 with a bigger build, a more muscular build, we're probably going to suggest that you go to a large. And a large is for 17 and over, or like I say, 16.3 uh, or so, 2.3, mm-hmm. with the larger builds. If you have any questions, just give us a call. We'll always guarantee the fit. Um, we can modify things that maybe you have a, a larger bodied horse, um, and we can provide the smaller straps if needed. We're happy to work with you, and we do guarantee it. And, you know, the nice thing about Pro 6 is, like uh, uh, like Summer said, it's it's critical to have a product you can use when you're when you're not riding. But the Pro 6 is designed that you can ride it with it under your saddle, or you can be out riding and decide you need Pro 6 at this particular time in riding and put it on over your saddle. So um, so it's very versatile that way. And once you ride in a Pro 6, you're not going to, you're, you're going to want to do that. Uh, stay more, with it. And yeah. Stay, yeah, at least condition with it. Mm-hmm. So let's talk a little bit about maybe where the name comes from, but then also what is proprioception? Like that's, that's a term that I feel like a lot of people aren't familiar with especially if you don't have a therapy background. Um, and of course we didn't even, I'm not even sure that we broke into the fact that you have a medical background and that you're also a body worker as mm-hmm. well. So, um, but, but let's kind of break into that and reconnecting the, okay. that nervous system, you know, re- reconnecting those nerve pathways to the brain. Okay, so proprioception is the sense of where any body part is in space, even when you can't see it. So even though your feet maybe are down underneath your chair or a hand is behind you, you know where it is and you're still able to move it and use it purposefully. 
So with horses, um, it's not uncommon to find a horse who is lacking proprioception in the hind end. Um, you see it when you're going over cavalettis or when you're bumping into pools on the jumps and things. In, in any different profession, you see it in a number of ways. And so one of the ways to increase that is to activate not only the receptors, but the neural pathways involved in lifting and moving that leg. Um, it even goes as far as we could talk about the brain and the cerebellum coordinating movement. Your brain needs to know what parts need to be activated and how to coordinate them effectively. So that's what proprioception is when we talk about it. We have proprioceptors you know, located not only in the lower limbs, but throughout the limbs and in the joints. Okay. And the name. Yeah, and the name. <laughs> is proprioception is something we noticed when we were experimenting, developing uh, Pro 6 was that uh, the horses had increased proprioception immediately. So I looked up the definite, definition of proprioception and they said proprioception was often, <clears throat> excuse me, called the sixth sense. So it's Pro 6. I like it. So leading off of what we just learned there, let's talk about how that transitions into like horses with neurologic issues, like whether it be EPM or um, you also talked about, you know, wobblers and, mm -hmm. and using it for like horses with West Nile and things like that. Um, uh, you know, and I, and I think it leads into also the video that you talked about today using do 20 or the byway point um, where all the nerves tie in mm -hmm. because that, that's going to be an area where that's deeply going to be affected by the atrophy with the right. Yep, it's 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 a nerve hub, mm -hmm. and like I said, it's that the point of a, point. yeah. Yes, okay. and so the acupuncture point we're talking about is is byway or do twenty if you're looking it up, um, and so on the horse it's just in front of it's basically in that lumbosacral junction, um, just in front of your SI. Um, on on humans, it's actually on the top of the head. But it's, it's where all of the meridians cross over and everything comes to a gathering point, basically. Right. Um, I actually think that might be one of the, I, I think the gathering place or the gathering point actually might be a, yes. another term for it. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, l let's talk a little bit about how the Pro 6 helps those EPM horses, because we're going to get that question on here a lot. So, Yes, and we should be, and we're excited to talk about it. Uh, again, when you're talking about an area of the body that is having neural issues, or at least where you can recognize it, most commonly in the hind, but it can happen anywhere, it's very important to address the whole horse because the whole body is connected. Looking at it another way, if a body part is, if there's weakness in a part of the body, as the body tries to compensate for that weak area, again, the whole body's involved. Well, why don't we just talk about it as an analogy. Um, EPM causes a disconnect. And so let's oh, talk okay. about it as a circuitry. Yep, and we, we do that. We talk mm -hmm. about a circuit board. We talk about wiring. So if you lose wiring to, to any part of the body and you lose that signal, it, it's offline and you can't work with it. You can't begin to heal that area until you address that neurological dysfunction or the lack of connection and and for people with EPM you know we know it's a it's a disease that you have to treat and treat hard with drugs etc but one of the most important things of EPM is to rehab them so you can't just leave them with their neurological deficits and their compensation patterns that are going to end up stressing other limbs over stressing I should say mm -hmm. and setting your horse up for other injuries. The back gets sore when the hips are off and the hips are off because there's leg weakness. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So we had a question on there. I'm trying to scroll back up and get through the questions. Um, how long do the horses wear it? What? That's an individual thing that depends on the horse and it depends on what you're what you're treating or rehabbing or conditioning through. Um, we tell we tell you to watch the horse. We never want to overly fatigue or stress yeah. a horse in workout, so yeah. fatigue. Time. Yeah, fatigue is a is a key component of this, and you know we sometimes say you know uh, please refer to, to a therapist, or you know you have to watch. You have to be a keen observer. Put it on. Watch your horse when he starts to tire. Take it off. 
Um, how often does he need it? I don't know. If your horse, I have rehabbed DPM horses that were severe or stroke-like, and I would put it on that horse almost every day for at least an hour because I wanted to keep reminding him of those connections. And that helps recreate the neural pathways. So once again, it's like how severely is the damage, um, you know, and what type of time you have to rehab, but um, ideally. I guess is there a, is there too long to leave it on? Is there an acclimation period? Like when you're just getting started, how do you know, how do you know when the horse has had enough or how do you know if you're, if you're doing enough with it? Well, we like, the first time you use it, we like to say, put it on, leave the horse alone let him wrap his mind around the process because he is going to feel a lot of new um, sensations. Sens sensations, right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and um, so just maybe the first time you walk a minute after he's had 20 or so minutes to, to get used to it, and then you're going to build from there. Um, walk a minute the first day, you know, maybe walk and trot them in hand the second day and build from there build in increments go slowly and progress slowly as the horse so that you don't have setbacks muscle strains any other issues to deal with um so we had another question on here um which we've run into as well okay. um what do you ladies recommend for rubbing on the chest so we had we actually had a horse here that that was showing a bit of rub marks that mm -hmm. we were having trouble with and um, y'all y'all been able to help with that by the adding of the sleeve so yeah we've started uh, manufacturing a protective sleeve that can be put either in the chest area or the uh, the butt area of the horse to protect from probes one thing that we learned by coming down here to summer and seeing so many EPM horses being rehabbed in one spot was to learn that they had skin sensitivity, which I did not know. So, you know, I, I learned something here. And, you know, again, you learn when you, you know, when you have somebody that's rehabbed so many horses with the same condition, she sees more than we do. So it was nice. And I'm glad we have this sleep now to address that problem. So they're available and we'd be happy to send you one if you need one. We're gonna start including them. When you when you get your bag with the Pro 6 in it, you're gonna have a sleeve, and we'll have other yes. ones available. And, and will they you. have, will they? Will it come with two sleeves or one in there? We'll start with one because they usually rub in the front or the back, and if you're having rubbing, check with us too, because it has to do with the tension of the bands because it is adjustable, and if you have it too tight, you might get rubs. If you have it too loose and there's too much movement, there can also be some rub. And, this time and, of year particularly with the humidity in. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and one thing too, like from a rehab standpoint, if you're if you're rehabbing several horses, because that, that question came from one of our um, rehab therapists that has been through our course. Mm -hmm. So Marianne, if, you're, if you've got a bunch of different sized horses, you might request two of them from them just absolutely. because you're going to run across right. different different conditions in the average horse owner. Right. Um, right. That, that would probably be my recommendation yeah. too as a therapist. Um, and so we address the, the use under saddle. Um, we are going to have some videos coming out. We're actually going to film them tomorrow. So we'll have some writing videos and we're going to put together, um, it'll be on our Thinkific, uh, but it will be a free course that's going to have all the videos that we've shot while they've been down here. Uh, but is there anything as far as the riding that they need to know on how to adjust it or where where all the straps set or you know do you just saddle right over the top of it or you can go over the top of your saddle or you can put it on underneath if you if you put it on under your saddle um, we haven't experienced any rubbing um, but like I said you, you always feel you can send us a photo of the fit on your horse because we will address and comment it and tell you whether you're on point or not. And the other thing is if you put it over the saddle, go ahead and put like um, a cloth in between the, the Pro 6 and your tack so as you don't get any rubbing on your tack. But other than that, um, the, the other straps will be okay. Um, you just uh, make sure that your fenders are clear of it 
and uh, you're 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 fine. You're set to go. Um, we had another question on here on a, a cutting type build that's 14 one. Their concern is that horse would be kind of maybe in the middle of the in between of the sizes. Um, Y'all do customs as well, correct? We if, can, we can, we can figure yeah. that out. But I, yeah, you know, I would tend to send. I would think that horse would be physically fit and probably fit into a standard. Mm -hmm. okay. um, if that, like I said, we guarantee the fit. If you're not happy, we're going to make you happy. We guarantee the product as well, by the way, and I think that's important because if you think that you'd like to try it and you're not sure, and you know, what do I do if if I don't like it? Um, for any reason, we say for within the first 30 days there, because we want you to use it, we want you to try it. If for any reason you want to send it back, we will refund your full purchase price. It uh, is a new product. Sorry. Um, and, and another question we had kind of on the opposite end of that spectrum, mm -hmm. um, we had a post, a lady has a very large um, Hanoverian percher on cross mm -hmm. that wears an 87 blanket that okay. came in in December that's very asymmetrical. She said, but he doesn't like any pressure on his shoulder area. Would the band impact that area? Uh, well, we've had horses today that don't like a lot of things that <laughs> yes. we have put the Pro 6 on. Sensitivity was one of those issues. You know, um, frankly, there was doubts here on whether the horses would like it. Mm -hmm. And we found that every horse pretty much was very accepting mm -hmm. of that pressure. Absolutely, and there was there was honestly a couple that, that I was surprised at that didn't give more of a fuss. Um, but one of the recommendations that they had uh, for one of the horses of ours that was really sensitive was to put it on her and then just put her in her stall and we just let her eat her grain last night Love and that. start to munch on hay. And we just, instead of putting her directly into work, we basically, just put her back into her comfort zone and let her acclimate to it herself. And the interesting thing about it was we all sat and watched her and she continued, like she would pick up um, her leg where she has the most atrophy and the biggest issue. She kind of continued to pick that leg up and not really kick it violently, but it was almost like a person trying to kind of shake their, their leg that's been asleep, you know, kind of mm -hmm. shake it loose and get that blood flow going. So that was like a really interesting find for us. Yeah, it, it is interesting to watch your horse when you first put it on because you see a different um, little quirks, so like um, licking, chewing. Uh, sometimes they look, turn around and start looking like we had a horse today that wore it for the first time and she kept looking at her hind end like uh, why is that coming with me now <laughs> because she had a disconnect going on so she was surprised that she was uh, strapped together um, another horse an interesting one was we had a mustang that came from out west and I guess when they shoe them or do their feet they put them on a table and put them on their sides and uh, do their feet squeeze shoot and the one mustang almost laid down on us we were very surprised that's the sensation she got from putting on the pro six but it you know it lasted like two seconds and it was over but it's interesting their their the horses take on it um so another question on here how long does it typically take for the horse to build that muscle and and reconnect those circuits, if you will, mm -hmm. um, to be able to move correctly without the Pro 6 on. And that's a great question, and the, my favorite part, I think, is the, the end of it there. How long before it can move like that independently and without the Pro 6? Pro 6 does not create a dependent situation. What you see when they're moving, they will hang on to. How long does it take? That you'd have to go to the initial diagnosis, what's going on with that horse, how bad is the injury or atrophy, what's the nutrition on that horse like. Mm -hmm. It's got so many aspects to it. Um, I'm going to say, we talk about when you first put it on the horse, watching things, and you'll see some immediate proprioceptive awareness, like, you know, 
some are talking about you know the horse picking up that leg you'll see you might see some goose stepping as things wake up and you know some some odd little gates that'll let you know that wow it is coming back online it takes a little bit to be able to sustain that though so well and horses are a little bit different than us where we talk I, I talk a lot about building muscle memory with horses but they don't actually have the muscle memory like a human does mm -hmm. um, and so you know like I feel like they're from a therapeutic standpoint a lot more honest of a case and honest of a result so mm -hmm. um, usually if they have the correct muscle structure to move correctly they are going to transition back into that more quickly than a human we we tend to hold on to um, maybe more of the defensive behavior and and things like that I feel like than animals do mm -hmm. um, but but so you know like a, a body a body can only do what it's prepared to do or what it's has the fitness level to do right. but as you start to condition that horse with it and those muscles start to build back correctly then the horse should be able to go on without it or or you lessen your sessions with it then at that point you use it for maintenance that's correct and it, it always should be used for maintenance because when you put it on again it's going to re-stimulate it's going to remind the horse it's like your body your brain is has has a memory to it of what it's like to move correctly once it does and you know to put the pro six on every now and then is a great thing to do it's a wonderful warm-up too because you're hitting on all the muscle groups and, and it is work it, it does increase work so you can get a lot done in a short amount of time so we have had people that have presented with a horse with EPM with all kinds of atrophy that even hand walking you know built up that top line and built up the supportive muscles in the core and so it, it can happen yeah um, okay, so next question. Is there a situation where the Pro 6 should not be used? Contraindications. Yes, uh, we've talked about that. I would say if you have any question that way, please refer to your vet, your physical therapist, I any mean, of these people. Or, that... You know, and I would say the Pro 6 encourages equal weight bearing. If you don't want an animal bearing weight on a particular limb at any time, you don't want to put the Pro 6 on them. Yeah, or an right. undiagnosed... Right, so, you know, injury. maybe... Well, and, and maybe too, it's more the the how you would use it. You know, that yeah, that may correct. be like say you had a horse that was having an issue with a limb, but they needed a little more stability. Maybe it just simply went on in a stall versus exactly. um, you know obviously putting the horse in work with it. Yeah, exactly. um, one thing that we talked about yesterday too was getting horses post colic surgery, and one of the things that that we kind of discussed is you know how you would use that belly band um, right along with like most of those horses when we get them have a drain tube right. mm -hmm. um, or, or a couple drain tubes in that incision site and so you know what I do when we start to use our PMF or our laser therapy is basically I take some combined cotton and put in between that way if anything does drain it doesn't drain on the equipment that I'm using mm -hmm. um, but you know that that might be an instance where we would need a wider band or would need to figure out an additional bands yes mm -hmm. um, you know kind of modify it per se I'd per be se, happy yeah. to help with that that'd be interesting um let's see here's a question pros and cons of warming up in the pro six before competition especially on maybe a horse that you needed to build hind engagement on or needed to remind them of hind end engagement we know people that use this that do compete you know, at a very high level for dressage and other things, it's a wonderful warm up. I would not go to the point of fatigue, but what a great way to, you know, bring them up into good posture and moving correctly. Well, I Did just I I don't know. On a personal <laughs> note, I use it to warm up at a show to calm and focus my horse. Oh, that's, yeah, that aspect too. Um, <laughs> you know, not necessarily for the conditioning because they, they are conditioned at home. And more, but I use it to calm and focus him before a horse show. Well, and let's talk a little bit about why why it calms and reduces anxiety. What what is it about this system that has such a strong anxiety reduction property right, to that's it? That's a great question, and it's it's a huge benefit. It has to do with the, the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. It has to do with the fight or flight response, and when horses are upset and agitated 
you're not going to have any good learning taking place. We know they're harder to deal with because they are a prey animal and they do exhibit those behaviors. And so when you engage swaddling, so think Temple Grandin, Dr. Okay. Temple Grandin, deep touch, pressure. deep touch pressure, her squeeze shoot, and finding that it calmed the cattle to have pressure on both sides of the body. And that was a huge thing for that industry. But for us, we're swaddling. Um, we can also ask you to think about, you know, the thunder shirt that they use on the dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, we also make a Pro 6 for canines. Ours I took that concept and amped it pretty well. It's, it's much more effective, I would say, because we have wider bands. The tension's a little bit more so that we can really engage that, that calming that comes. When you swallow something, when you wrap something up tight. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a theory that's been around for a long time, but we see it in action. So do you feel like that maybe on some of these horses that are anxious in the shows, um, is it something you would leave on them all night in the stall or you would leave on for a few hours? On the animal, and if the horse was circling, and, but I think that would calm all that down. Yeah. I think it we, would be yeah, helpful. I, you know, I mostly have seen um, the anxiety in the pen, per se. So I've, I've seen it utilized in the warm-up pen. Mm-hmm. But, um, well, but we, we see a lot of people, like, especially with your EPM horses that don't, or, or us as a rehab, where we have horses that are stalled that would not normally be stalled, and they have to be because of some sort of oh, an injury. Yeah, yeah. Or, Wonderful you know, there. There, there was a kind of a flood of topics on the EPM groups and boards over the 4th of July of people trying to lock horses up and trying to contain them for the fireworks. Right. and and things like that but you know also conditioning young horses to be able to go down the road to shows and things like that mm -hmm. um yeah. I, I do think that there would be a benefit to it right absolutely uh, yeah, there is a benefit to it well for the trail riders i always think of that because not only is it stability and added proprioceptive awareness but oftentimes you run into things and people and bikes and kids and all kinds of stuff on mm -hmm. the trails if you have that added aspect where they're not only supported, but they're calm, right. it's, a it's a much safer ride. And so let's talk a little bit about how it increases stride. And let's talk about, one, why your balance and why an even stride is even important. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I run into, again, as a, as a rehab therapist, as, you know, you have the, the person that maybe doesn't do their training symmetrically. Um, another thing that I have started to study with some of these horses that have, um, you know, issues with C7 or their upper thoracics, mm -hmm. um, where they talk about, you know, as Western riders, where we constantly just get on from the left side. And if you're somebody mm -hmm. who doesn't have a lot of spring and bounce that really has to climb up on your horse, how over time that causes a shift in the withers. Mm -hmm. And then as you start to get that shift in the left shoulder, you start to develop a weakness in the right hind in the diagonal. Right. Um, but, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about that, that balance and that stride and why it matters. Why, why does hind engagement matter? Well, you know, you want equal, equal load on all the limbs, uh, all the feet. You don't want any one foot um, bearing uh, more weight than it's supposed to during a certain uh, footfall and stride and you want elasticity in those pastures and so when you put this on it is telling the horse by wrapping it front to back and side to side you have four limbs utilize those four limbs stand up straight in your posture correct posture and move forward and straight and forward and straight is a very important thing in movement yes because most people don't realize like when a horse takes a lead they don't realize that it's the outside hind that fires pushing the diagonal into the lead you're asking and, the horse and, to take and in fact a lot of horses cheat by day uh, by side I forget even what they call that, two tracking their horses down the rail and cheating actually. But this is gonna keep them straight in utilizing their footfalls underneath their body, behind each other, and in equal length. Mm -hmm. Well, and as the, as the hind leg comes up, 
the way the system's designed, it frees the diagonal shoulder so that it lets that leg extend while the, the hind leg is pushing up under. That, that's because um, of the elastic resistance, right. It is, it's going to create rhythm and cadence. And that canter must be a great teller because we get a lot of people who are having trouble with one lead or the other, you're always stronger to one side. Mm -hmm. But if you're having issues that way, that's often a balance issue. Right. But, but you're right, Summer, that is a huge thing in the way it's automatically designed to do that for you. Mm -hmm. And you know, what's good about the Pro 6 is the Pro 6 is letting the horse learn it itself instead of, I mean, I took lessons for 30 years and my timing was never impeccable. <laughs> Well, and, so, and I mean, that brings up a whole whole nother conversation about the unbalanced rider yeah. um, and, you know, the, the issues that we cause with the horse simply because of our own own balance issues. And trying to stay under you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, this is going to help you create a balanced horse without you balancing it. And if you have to balance it, something's wrong. Right. Absolutely. Is there so, a dependence there on cues and things too then? Mm -hmm. A balanced horse is a sound horse too. So um, we have another question here. How long will the elasticity of the straps last? How many years do you expect the system to last? Um, we've experienced about five years. I mean, well, it's not that they've given up at five years. We've had them out there that long and they're still good. Yeah. And they're still functioning. Probably depends on how much the size of the horse, like where we're ours, you know, we have so many different types of horses and different types of sizes, and we work so many, you know, where we may be putting our unit on, you know, 10 to 12 horses in a day. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're definitely, we're, we, right. do, we do test equipment really well because we, yeah. we use, it, it definitely gets right. used we'll in get this barn. We'll get back to you on that after right. we find out how long one lasts with summer's use. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in reality, we are purchasing commercial grade uh, e elastic and you know one thing we're proud to say is we're made in America and all the material comes from the USA so we're a USA made product awesome um, so had another question on here about you know being short strided in the front end mm -hmm. and you know working over poles and things mm -hmm. um, so I know we've been using ours over our Cavalettis up and down our inclines um, in the tread I think one thing I would probably caution, you know, my therapists that are watching, um, you know, if you're if you've got salt water in your tread, probably not letting that um, splash up on the material. We, we find oh. that our salt tends to kind of eat away on a lot of things. Oh, wow. um, we we've not run across any issues yet, but that was one of the things that we kind of took note of. Of like, okay, we probably don't want to have um, a whole bunch of the salt water up on the elastic constantly. Okay. Um, so talking about using the Pro 6 in addition to other therapies, um, yeah. I mean, obviously I know in this barn, um, <laughs> yeah. it, it gets, How many it gets therapies thrown, does summer do? Right. Uh, it gets thrown in the mix with everything. But, um, you know, what have you seen as a body worker? Like, would this be something that would work for the average body worker to use? Oh, yes, 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 yes. So, you know, we are high, we are recommended by chiropractors because they find that it helps to keep their adjustments in place. As a body worker, yes, um, I like it because horses are feeling calm and balanced when I'm working on them. Uh, it quiets them down. Um, it's a product that I would want you to use after I've worked on your horse to try to keep those muscles being utilized after they were after they were loosened up and softened instead of going back to being hard and useless muscles we also talked about farriers horses, oh, yes. horses that are difficult right, yes. to trim or difficult to shoe um, yeah, or have an injury or such that it's hard for the farrier to get them done yes epm horses uh, walking stifles you know these horses we have had Farriers use that for these horses so they can get them done because the horses feel comfortable and supported. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else y'all want to add before we jump out to the barn? Because then I'm going to have you demonstrate how to correctly put the Pro 6 on and, um, you know, we'll, we'll put it on one out there. 
trailering. That's another good one where balance can be important, especially Absolutely. If you have especially on your APM horses where they're already having weak balance or compromised? issues. Compromised, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So put them in that, and they'll have a much better ride. They'll feel supported, and they'll be standing. If you've noticed, when you put the Pro Six on, oftentimes the horse will automatically take a wider stance in the hind, but, and that's what we want trailering certainly. Yeah, and you know, while I have the opportunity here before we jump out into the barn, I want to talk about EPM. It's the three-letter bad word. And um, I, see, I see the people out there fighting so hard, treating their horses, buying them everything they need to conquer what damage EPM has done. But I think what they don't realize is the muscle loss and the um, lack of communication that happens. And it's not going to change unless you um, do the right kind of rehab. So yes. be be careful and research that. Well, and I'm going to add on to that, too, from a supplementation standpoint. And this is not knocking anybody's supplements because, you know, nutrition is important for healing. But supplements are not a cure-all either. Everybody wants to give all of these, oh, let's, you know, let's feed this to build muscle. Let's feed this to, you know, um, get the bulk back on the horse to build top line to, you know, whatever. And all that's great because the nutrition is important, um, especially if they're deficient in something. But if you don't have functioning muscle, um, it doesn't matter what you feed that muscle. It's It's got to be retrained. It's got yeah. to um, it's got build, build into functioning muscle. And yeah. you have to start with your stabilizing muscle. And then you transition back into moving or to building your movement muscle, to building your fast twitch muscle. And that is not something that can be done through nutrition alone, whether it be the feed that you're feeding or whether it be whatever supplements on the market. That's something that is done through movement. You know, professional athletes that have plenty of money and can, can buy whatever supplement they want, that's not a replacement for them going to the gym. That's not a replacement for them working with a trainer. That's just exactly what it says it is. It's a supplement to everything else you're doing. Correct. Uh, amen to that. And let's talk about real quick uh, the neurological retraining as well. And that's another description that we should bring up about the Pro 6. It looks like it's a very simple product, but the effect on the neurological system with the rewiring is really profound. And you can, you can innervate those muscles even when there's atrophy. And if you start with stimulating them that way as well with the electrical stimulation to get those cells moving again and get those neural pathways working again. Yeah, it's it, and it's not just one. It, it's not just one thing. I mean, it just it takes it takes a team to rebuild things. But fitness fitness is at the foundation of all of it. it you know, um, a, again, you can run a laser. You can run PMF. You can choose whatever piece of equipment of your choice. And yes, it helps to heal. Yes, it's a great it's a great um, addition and a great tool. But therein again, you still have to come back and retrain that fitness. Right. Yeah. Um, and Build your foundation. Absolutely. And I, I preach that and I preach that and everybody wants that shortcut. And I promise you there's just not yeah. one. Right. Um, so we have another question on here. Um, has a horse that when, when they lope, they're not gathered and is a mess um, when we're going counterclockwise okay. um, using the Pro 6 for that? Oh yeah, that, that absolutely. absolutely we've seen it. Um, it's a balance issue. Uh, the Pro 6 helps rebalance that mm -hmm. and you have to, you know, one thing the Pro 6 also does when you put it on it is it'll break compensation and maybe when you first put it on it you're going to see something ugly and that something ugly may be what truly is causing that horse not to take that lead. <laughs> <laughs> the source of the problem. The source of Absolutely. the problem. Absolutely. That's a good point, too. It's a wonderful diagnostic tool that way. Mm -hmm. They won't be able to hide from things. And if right. they have been compensating, that is its own type of balance. So you put on a tool that helps them rebalance. You may see some missteps, and you may mm -hmm. see a little awkwardness as they try to figure out because their compensation patterns are being overrun with these new signals, and it's all falling apart a little bit. Yeah. It, it comes mm -hmm. together again very quickly. Yeah. Well, we had a horse that. earlier that we put the, the Pro 6 on that mm -hmm. um, she was able to 
cheat and compensate and looked pretty decent on the lunge line without it. And then when we put the Pro 6 on and asked her to take a frame, um, right. she actually almost appeared lame in the front in the front end on the the front leg that she had been overloading that we had been constantly working on. Right. But but yeah, it definitely showed itself there. It, and so, it, it could get ugly before mm -hmm. it gets pretty. And so what we decided with her, the best plan of action is to slow her down, you know, take her, yeah, take her back to a absolutely. walk, take her back to just moving straight in the pro six. Of course, obviously here she'll be on the, on the tread with it, but you know, start to rebuild that conditioning, um, going straight before we took her back to the circle where she was going to need, mm -hmm. a, need more of that hind end engagement because obviously our hind end engagement was not quite where it needed to be. Right. And you know, and I will tell a little story here about a little mare we, we had that um, had the most atrocious low one could ever see, both directions. And uh, we just conditioned her and worked her in the Pro 6, and she developed a beautiful little canter, both directions. And it's been years, and she hasn't lost it. So it's worth the time to invest in, in balancing your horse. Absolutely. Um, so we actually have a dog question on here too. Um, has it had an effect on dogs with um, cerebellar hyperplasia? A profound effect. And again, that's where we talk about the neurological um, you know, impact that something like the Pro 6 can have. So we have had a couple of clients with cerebellar hyperplasia, which when we're talking about cerebellar, we're talking about the cerebellum, which is responsible for coordinating movement and they have a lot of extra movements that are out of control as well. You know that. So how, what, what um, kind of give us some symptoms of dogs that have that? Their movements are very uncoordinated and it can, it's, it's quite a range. Um, are they the one that kind of have like the wiggles that tend to fall down or the over kind of wiggle? Absolutely. Or, okay. or the over, dancing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the lifting too high. Um, it's, yeah, it's not, um, it's not a coordinated movement. It's difficult to describe because okay. it, it can be. There's a wide range of it. Um, many dogs are very happy with that, and they're fine. There are some that do need some assistance. You know, that really try to work. You know, just to move, just to move forward. What happens when you put the Pro Six on? In a sense, we'll go back to the wiring metaphor. You're rewiring, and it's it's our belief that when you rewire by giving the the brain, the cerebellum, all that sensory information the brain is then better able to coordinate. And so a lot of those extraneous movements then go away and you're able to strengthen and work on the whole dog. So the dogs seem very comforted by it and they move very well in it. And the results can be very profound. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, all right, is there anything else you want to add before we migrate no, out to the barn? let's go in the barn. Let's all go right. watch, that's more fun. Thank all you. Right. I'm going to grab this phone and... Come I'll... along. <laughs> exactly. Alrighty. Oop. I'm going to flip this camera around and we're going to head out to the barn. And y'all feel free to keep those questions coming and um, we're going to keep answering them as we work out here. Alrighty. So... We've got Miss Z coming to help us this evening. And where's our, we have our pro, we have our pro six out. Hey. Everybody say hi to the girls. They've been out here working all day. <laughs> Very hard working crew. All righty. There's a blue tag. There's a blue tag. The blue tag's hidden under your uh, under my right now. Oh, well that does me no good. All right, so if you want to step over here, I'll have you just kind of go through how this looks when it comes out of the packaging and... pretty much in a bundle when you take it out of the package and um, we 
have the protective sleeve on it, and I'll tell you right now, it's easier to put the sleeve on before you put it on the horse and, and leave it on. Um, if you're only going to work one horse, once you get this fitted once, you should be good for the duration. If you're going to use it on several horses, you can refit it as you go. You want to turn her? You, which way you want her? Facing well, that way? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I can't do it from the left. You tell me. <laughs> I'm not coordinated. Okay. okay. So, this Pro 6 goes on like a closed front blanket or a sheet. Um, if you have a horse that hasn't had it on before, I recommend having a helper and secondly, desensitizing them to the Velcro noise. And uh, thirdly, kind of getting them a little accustomed to this. Sometimes I'll run the elastic over their nose like this. And, you know, it looks silly, but it does work. Um, but this horse has had it on before. So we're just going to slip it over her head. And we're going to just lay it out across her body. And what size is she wearing? She is going to wear a standard okay. today. Uh, can, we, can we interject at this point? Sure. That the Pro 6 comes put together like this with the wither straps fastened and the hip straps fastened. It's put together, but not for your horse. Okay? So you're going to, once you get it on, you may need to adjust it. We yeah. Have, and sometimes you know, we'll acclimate the horse a little bit at this point, but like I said, this horse has had it on. So we're gonna head, go ahead and put it around her, her butt. And um, we're gonna start adjusting it to fit this horse. Now, I like to have a horizontal band if I can. This horse has enough muscle to support that horizontal band. Sometimes horses lack hamstrings and this band I guarantee is going to slide down like this and this metal loop may bend. That is okay. Don't worry about that. Your horse will build up enough muscle so that eventually you'll get it riding a little higher. Okay, um, now going to the front. I like the strap to be just under the neck here. I don't want it too low like a push-up bra. I want it up higher. I want the strap, the wither strap to be in front of the withers ideally. So there's eight inches of adjustment here. Now I want this band and this side to be horizontal too and it's going a little high for me. So you can use this abdominal strap to help support the, um, the mid strap staying horizontal. Um, if you have a kissing spine horse, we have come to like this band coming from behind here and going at an angle here. It kind of encourages long and low movement but we don't need that in this case. So we're just gonna adjust this band and keep it in front of her hips. When you first start out, these tensioners on the hind can be looser and you can tighten them as you go. Or if your horse builds muscle, you don't have to tighten them because they will get tighter on its own. And lastly, we have the abdominal strap here. It goes over the back, comes up under, and we've designed it especially to lift those abdominal muscles, and that's to strengthen the core. And we like it over the back here because as we're asking her to lift, she's also getting support on her back. Okay, so that is 
about how I would adjust this wrap for this horse. Of course, movement is what counts. So if this horse is in movement and the strap isn't working, play with the straps. You'll get it right or contact us and we'll help you get it right. And the thing I've noticed is she's already lowered her head and is starting to get a more relaxed look in her eye. Like she's already kind of kind of lowering and, and relaxing a bit just since it's been on. Yes, they do. You know, and another thing with rehabbing and asking your horse to do something that's hard for them is the confidence. And we've noticed they get confidence with this on. So we have a question about under or over the tail. How do we wear oh. it? <laughs> it's a good question, thank well, you. Sometimes when we first start out, we leave it uh, over the tail, but most times you can pull it out. But I would That's say if I had a super sensitive horse that wasn't sure about the whole thing, I might let them wear it for 10 minutes, walk them out. If they're really upset about the whole thing, I might let them wear it like that the first day or two and not put them to work. And then, and then try to take it out again. But most horses don't have a problem with it. And so um, I'm actually going to do some stretches on this mare. Um, we'll move her right over here where we can see. Because that was one of the questions that, that I had myself is, you know, does this allow, if you just hold it, um, you know, does this allow for enough freedom with stretching? Um, of course, I'm not going to ask for a lot, a huge stretch with her because obviously she's not warmed up. I'm, this is cold muscle at this point. But um, just to kind of give you an idea of it, so if I'm picking up this front leg, um, where we're going to see that pull is going to be on that outside hind. So if I'm just going through my stretches and if I go ahead and ask the leg to come forward here in the front, she doesn't give me any issue with it at all, um, you know, as far as doing, doing the stretch and having this band come around the shoulder. So you can see... This is not a bad stretch here for a horse that, you know, it has cold muscle. So again, I'm not gonna ask her for like a big dramatic stretch. Um, same thing if I if I go back with the leg here and just ask her um, to push this leg back, I have, I have no issue. I have no issue asking the shoulder to come out. Um, I can still do, you know, my rocking on the shoulder. And actually what I see here is her you know, needing a little more stability in that left hind as I go through this maneuver. And so again, when we're stretching cold horse, you know, my, my reminder is don't push that horse past the point of tolerance because we don't typically stretch cold muscle. Basically what I'm doing here is assessing that range of motion before the muscles warmed up. So I'm not over asking her, and she's also used to being stretched daily. So now if I go back to this hind leg, you know, ask this leg to come forward. She's able to do that with, with no issue from the Pro 6. When I ask the leg to come back, you know, I still get no resistance there. So you can very easily do a complete stretching session with the Pro 6 on, and it's not gonna impede any of their movement. It's not gonna impede anything that you're doing with them. Okay, so we had a question a lady asked if her horse tends to stand very heavy on the front mm -hmm. um, when it's just standing at rest with this alpha situation. And again, I think it does because it's telling the horse, again, you have four feet and please equally distribute the weight between all four feet because it's it's reminding them where their front is, where their back is, where the left is, where the right is. And in addition to that would be doing some backing with the horse with the Pro 6 on. Because as you start yeah. to build that hind end muscle, they're going to be more confident and they're going to be able to stand more so on their hind end and not dump so far forward. Because we do see that a lot. Um, we actually had a kissing spine horse that we could not get to back. Um, we, we could not back this horse, and once we started, the owner had issue backing the horse, 
And, and that's, that's a common thing with kissing spine. Um, we, we actually see that a lot. Those horses don't want to back or they want to back to the side or they want to throw their head up and be dramatic. Um, and so with that horse in particular, when we started him in the Pro 6, um, that was the only way that we could get him to back. And then by the time we sent him home, he was able to back without the Pro 6. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was a great improvement there that we saw with that one with it. Wonderful. You know, we talked so much about going forward, but, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> part of the way that we, um, you know, release this tension in the back is by actually backing the horse and yeah. building that hip back up. Yeah, I never thought of that, but that's essential. Yes, and, and people, that's one way that we um, unload the hip flexors is, is by making the person back up and build the glutes and build the core. Yeah. So, um, do we have any more questions on there? Y'all have anything else that you want to add? Um, where, where can they find you? Where, where do they go to order this? Okay, we have a website. The address is uh, www.eagleprosix.com. And uh, you can go ahead and look us up and order from there. And uh, Linda and I are from Upper Michigan. And so you have a Facebook page as well, correct? We do have a Facebook page. And you can shop from that, too. Yes. We do have one more question. It's asking how do you clean the Pro 6 and the sleeve? Are they machine washable? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, we that's, absolutely that's a good are. question. We would recommend cold water and then hang it to dry. Um, the easiest way to uh, clean it after rolling <laughs> Thank you, Jill. This is the easiest way to clean this if you're not going to actually put it in a machine and wash it on gentle is to go ahead and brush it when it's on the horse. <laughs> That's the most effective way I have ever found to clean it. And as far as these, this Velcro goes, mm -hmm. um, the best way to get the hair and dirt out of that is to get the short, cheap men's comb and to go ahead and just use the comb to clean, clean this hook out and it'll come out good. So yes, you can throw it in the machine on gentle, but the easiest way to get dirt off this thing is to brush it off. Um, and I'm going to take Karen's question here. Um, I have a horse that um, is, is high strung, um, low starch diet, most on grass pasture. Um, will this help? So in my opinion, and I mean y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but in my, my opinion it would be figuring out what is the root cause of that horse's anxiety. Is it an underlying pain issue? Um, you know, is the horse just, just hot? Um, it, it's going to depend on that situation what is causing it. Um, you know, it, it's definitely not going to hurt. Um, and the benefits, the other benefits of having it and being able to condition your horses in it definitely make it worth the purchase price. Um, but what I have seen is it has helped all of these horses relax. But that being said, you know, if there's a soft tissue injury, if there's a lot of arthritis, like if there's something that needs veterinary care, that is causing that pain issue, um, you know, sometimes there's no fix other than going to your vet because nothing nothing we talk about on this page at all is, is a replacement for your vet or a replacement for, you know, even chiropractic yeah. care. Yeah. Um, so, again, this is back to kind of what I addressed earlier is there's no one magic bullet. Right. Um, but now, if you have, so I have seen a lot of horses that are bleeders, um, especially in the barrel pen, that the bleeding comes from a lack of fitness because those horses are fatiguing themselves and exhausting themselves because they're not physically fit enough to meet the demand of the event that they're doing. And so a lot of times that anxiety is, is enough to spark the strain that causes bleeding. And so, you know, in that case, as you start to rebuild that fitness, that anxiety should go away, those gait issues should go away because you've reached the root cause of the problem. So, um, you know, there and again, um, like say even a horse that, that was very severely ulcer, it had ulcer issues, um, being able to work with that parasympathetic nerve system and take that horse out of flight is going to be advantageous for healing the ulcers, but that's not saying it's a replacement for going to your vet and maybe then prescribing omeprazole or making a feed change that, that benefits that. Right. So sometimes those questions are, are, are a little too open-ended for us to have a definitive answer. So I, I hope that helps um, 
even though that's not a completely clear answer. <laughs> um, will this help with asymmetric issues? Yes. That's that's what we've been talking about. Like it's the rebuild. Yes. When we talk about like, um, you know, say say this horse was not wanting to take the left lead. Um, a lot of times your inability to take that lead comes from a weakness on this hind because your outside hind has to fire for that horse to be able to move into the lead that you're asking that horse to take. Um, also horses that are dull sided. You see a horse when they're trying to evade using their hind end, um, they'll get really flat through their rib cage and you'll see them tip their head to the outside in that circle and they almost appear like you're riding a wooden board um, versus having that core engagement and versus that horse being able to pick up their core and move into the turn. And so a lot of that comes from being able to strengthen this hind end. Because if you go ahead, will you lead her forward? So, so if y'all watch, um, you know, as she takes a step, this is encouraging her to continue to move forward. So if you notice too, you know, as she moves her diagonal leg forward, you see a gap in it um, as that's releasing. So when, when she's stepping forward, you can go ahead and turn around, Alyssa. There we go. So as she moves into the tension and into the resistance, uh, you see it pull on the hind leg as well. And as she moves away from it, then you see it kind of gap back, which is retraining her brain. Anything else you want to add on the movement? No, I think Summer, I think you covered that quite well. And if you'll back her, just stop and back her towards the halo that way. So here, here is it in a back. Also things to add when you're when you're backing your horse, they will typically fade to the weak side. Um, and when we're working outside with them, we back with a little more speed, but we're trying to not run over our camera person. <laughs> Sorry. But um, but yeah, so now you just move her back forward. So, so there's kind of the, the pro six in a little bit of movement. And, and I'm not sure on this mare. That's good. Alyssa, there we go. Um, would you go ahead and tighten this? Does she have a little too much gap here? Or no, does that seem this, right? No. Pay attention, people. That's a fit issue. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So that means I have to make an adjustment because this isn't working in movement. Okay. So I'm going to try to keep this up. Because where do you want that to sit? Do you want that to be as flat as it can be horizontal, or is it okay if it slips down on the horse? What causes it to slip down? Uh, what causes it to slip down is either lack of hamstrings, and sometimes we just don't have them and it's going to slip down, or the way you have it fitted. Okay. And like I said, that's that's why you know I'm a human being and every horse is individual, and we have to work with this to make it work with your horse. So there's nothing against putting it like this, which is gonna keep the hind end up more by moving it back. You're, you're pushing the support farther back to the hind end. So this is not gonna change the effectiveness of the wrap. And, and you can go ahead and move her, and I think it will maintain now. Okay. So you want to go ahead and lead her and, and just turn around there and then Michaela can follow you. And so we're her to sliding still just a little bit down. Is it just just a compensation pattern that she's working on? Yeah. Okay. I'd be happy with this. Okay. That's good if you want to stop her and back her one more time. So the little bit that that slid down, you're not.
and draw it and woven everything like that. Yes, and you can catch all, if you're just joining us, you can catch this on the replay and you'll be able to watch the whole thing again. Um, when we finish these lives, uh, we always repost them. But if there's anything else that you want to add on well, the writing, feel know, free to add. Well, you know, as far as writing, if I was going to ride, and I do ride in it quite often, I would throw my blanket on this horse, my saddle, ride a lure up, and go. There's been occasions where I've taken a horse out, and I'm not liking my ride, and I decide I'm going to put it on, where I come back, the horse is saddled already, I'll go ahead and put it on, just like I did. This goes over the saddle, and the only thing I caution is that you put something between your saddle and this strap, but otherwise you're good to go. You're golden. Perfect. So if you were going to use it to warm up at a show, mm -hmm. maybe you would put it over your tack then, right. and if you were working yep. with it at home and, and mm -hmm. wanted to use it for the whole ride, maybe you would put it under in yeah. that situation? Right. Okay. Right. Perfect. Well, thank you all for doing this live. I think, yeah, so I think it's been really, really great. And um, I'm sure they will be checking back on the questions. So if there's, if you have any more questions, feel free to add them on there. We'll make sure they get answered. I'll tag them in there if it's something that I can't answer. Um, again, we covered the ordering information. And um, on our Thinkific, um, I will be posting the link to it. But we're going to try to get all the videos that we've shot here over the last couple of days. We're going to try to get them up and live by tomorrow evening. That way y'all can see all of the information. And again, that will be a free download for you. Um, but anyway, th thank y'all for joining us. And you, as always, I'm Summer Terry from Superior Therapy. You can find us at SuperiorTherapyLLC.com and right here on Facebook at Superior Therapy LLC as well. Happy trials, y'all.